curly hair. It took me over half a decade to learn to say that with a smile. <laughs> I was born with a mop of curls. And by the age of two, I looked pretty much the way I look right now, <laughs> without my glasses. By the age of four, my hair was long enough that my mother could pull it into long ringlets. And by the age of five, I had learned to pull them out again. Mm -hmm. This is my first grade class picture. If you could look closely at it and see me in the middle, you would see me pulling my hair tightly against my desk to get it straight. Yeah. That, Mr. Contest Chair, fellow Toastmasters and most welcome guests, was the very beginning of my 50-year battle with my own head. <laughs> we had moved by then from central New York to central Florida. From there, we moved to Jacksonville and then to Fernandina Beach. With every move, the climate got humider and humider <laughs> and humider. <laughs> and my hair got curlier and curlier and curlier until I was 13. That's when I learned to sleep on me. <laughs> Remember these ladies? We call them soup can curlers. And sometimes I'd use real soup cans. <laughs> but gentlemen probably don't remember these exactly, but you may remember rolling over in the middle of the night to encounter an unpleasant pile of plastic on the pillow next to you. <laughs> I would roll my hair carefully on each curler, pulling it tight until my eyes watered. Then I'd <laughs> pin it to my scalp with a metal clip. I don't know if it was because of these, or in addition to this, that caused so much brain damage. <laughs> but once a week, I would have to wet set my hair, encase the whole thing in heavy plastic, and bake it for 45 minutes. <laughs> then when I was 15, I'd invite my friends over on Saturday morning. We'd set up <coughs> the ironing board. I'd lay my head on the ironing board and we'd iron my hair straight. <laughs> but then, by the time I was 16, I had done it. I had a head full of long, smooth, straight, silky hair mm -hmm. until it <laughs> then I had a two-foot afro. <laughs> the battle continued through electric rollers, hair irons, and blow dryers. Ah, blow dryers. Eighteen hundred and seventy-five watts of power, heating a metal plate embedded with flammable plastic bristles. <laughs> Have you ever been blow drying your hair? You hear a pop. The lights go out. <laughs> you smell smoke. And you know your hair's on fire. <laughs> I have more than once. But not even that deterred me from trying to straighten my hair. It wasn't till I encountered this stuff that I really stopped to think what I was doing. Frizz. Straight making no frizz styling treatment by living proof. 24.95 for a four ounce bottle. <laughs> this was developed by a group of graduate students at MIT competing in an engineering contest. And it worked until it rained. <laughs> <laughs> and that really gave me pause. That, ladies and gentlemen, was the last straw, or should I say strand. <laughs> I learned that the only difference between this stuff and this stuff was one atom and $20. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, 
I stopped to think what I had been doing, and I realized that if I'd had all the time and all the money I had wasted trying to make myself look like something I just wasn't, I could have had my own graduate degree from MIT. <laughs> so I made an appointment with a hairdresser, got it all cut off, and just let it curl. Life's so much easier now. All I have to do when I get up in the morning is wet my fingers, run it through my hair, and off I go. It really is so much more relaxing, and I'm so much happier now that I just let myself look like me. Because I live in Tampa, Florida. It rains a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and I have curly hair. <laughs> Mr. Thompson. <laughs>